Yes, it's that time again. Q&A time. I do a monthly Q&A and I ask you to go to Twitter and follow me at MusicIsWin. Tweet me using the hashtag AskTyler. And let's do it. Israel asks, should I change my pick? Uh, no. What kind of pick do you use, Tyler? Uh, I use Dunlop 0.88 millimeter picks. Siddharth Shabham asks, what is the saddest chord ever? Like right after a breakup sad. I suppose this one. <laughs> Ginger Powder asks, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Hell no. Bethany Larson asks, how much do you love me? Darling, if I were to live on for 1,000 centuries, I would be yours in all of them. If I were to live a trillion lives, then I would try to make you mine in each one. Egadub Drawers asks, is it possible to have an in-tune G string? Then Tyler says, no. Then Egadub Drawers says, dude, let Tyler answer it in his video. Then Tyler says, I am Tyler. And then Igor Dubraras says there can only be one guitar playing Tyler. Well, that escalated quickly. No, you can never have an in-tune G-strings. G-strings are annoying. Peyton asks, what is the most interesting thing theory-wise in your opinion? Hmm, I think the most interesting thing uh, that I can think of off the top of my head is a chord. It's an A, E, F sharp major 9 chord. Here's what it sounds like. Octave up, here's some different colors. I heard it in a uh, Jacob Collier video actually in his arrangement of the Apex Twin Hide and Seek song. Joey B asks, why SC245 over a Les Paul? Uh, well, it sounds better, looks better plays better, is better. Blank asks, what cities or places in Europe will you be visiting? Ah yes, the cat is out of the bag. I'm gonna be going to Europe at the end of September uh, through October, like the first part of October for this thing called GitCon. Maybe you've seen other YouTubers post about it. I'm gonna make a separate video that details just what it's about, but this guy Henning Polly, who's here on YouTube, he's the organizer and there's all these different brands coming in and it's gonna be spectacular. But as far as where I'm gonna be going, I'm going to Germany, which is where the event is, and then I'm staying in Munich and try and catch the end of Oktoberfest. Then I'm going to Italy in Venice, and then I'm going to Paris, France, um, and that's kind of like a vacation that Bethany and I will be taking just because we haven't been on a vacation in a very long time. So it's well overdue, hard earned. And if you guys have any recommendations for any of those places, what to do, please leave a comment. Duncan asks, I know Metallica memes are dead, but doesn't the solo to the end of the line sound like someone brushing their teeth? Uh, I'm gonna have to listen to this. <laughs> That's what brushing your teeth sounds like, and I would say make sure to rinse your toothbrush afterwards with water. All right, this next group of questions all has the same answer, so I'm putting them all up at once. Theo is asking about different mode positions and wondering if there's a crossover between minor modes and pentatonic scales, etc. Kate is asking if Guitar Super System is okay for a beginner still familiarizing with the Nashville number system. And Jeremiah J. Frog asks, would you recommend Rocksmith and how much money do I need to buy all of your courses? So, Guitar Super System covers the major scale modes, all seven of them, and how to use them for improvising. And you learn all the different mode positions in every single key. You'll learn all the different mode positions using three notes per string. It's actually a more efficient and effective way for improvising. And once you learn one key, you automatically know all the keys. So there's that. It'll also tell you the difference between smaller scales like the pentatonic scale and the larger seven note scales, sometimes eight note scales like the major scale or the diminished scale and how those relationships interact together. Essentially, a pentatonic scale is just a broken down version of 
Phrygian, Dorian, Aeolian, just like you're inferring, but it goes deeper than that. Guitar Super System shows you how. There are arpeggio overviews, triad overviews, chord overviews, and different ways to, again, put these things into action, not just learn them and be like, look, I can play all these scales up the neck. It's more about finding your own voice. That's what I think is the most important thing as guitar players is to play with our own voice. So that is what my course does. If you wanna sign up for it, please click on the link in the description and you can do that and support me in the process. I really appreciate it. Taylor Valentine asks, how does it feel knowing you've been in the same college as Vi, Mayer, Satriani, and many other highly praised musicians? Honestly, I don't really feel a connection to those people because they are like these guitar gods on the screen who aren't even really real people sometimes it feels like, but I have uh, seen all of these people in concert, so I'm pretty confident that they exist. But as far as the connection with Berklee College of Music, which by the way, Satriani didn't go there, uh, I don't really feel that much of a brotherhood, but maybe one day that'll change. Telly Shredder asks, is it possible to shred like John Petrucci on a 22 fret guitar or Les Paul? Uh, yeah, the guitar does not dictate your technique. Man Bear Pig asks, should I train my ear first or learn to read music first? The fact that you're even asking that question, I assume you are a person of conviction who is wanting to pursue guitar as a craft. So I would say start with ear training. That tends to be on the more fun side learning solos and things like that, and then sprinkle in some sight reading. The biggest thing with sight reading is to do it consistently. I would start with 10 minutes a day. Harv asks, what was the first riff you learned to play? I don't really remember, but the one that pops to the top of my head is Back in Black by ACDC. Tyler Jacob asks, do you like Children of Bodom? Absolutely. I think Alexi Lejo is an extremely awesome guitar player, and I think the solo to Every Time I Die is one of the sickest, most epic solos ever played. Acid Pixel asks, are the signature Dumlop Crybabies worth it for the money? Let me show you which ones I have. So I have tried the Kirk Hammett, the John Petrucci, and the Eddie Van Halen signature was. My friends at Dunlop hooked me up with these. I am extremely grateful for that. Uh, I would recommend any one of these. Honestly, my favorite one is the Petrucci one just because it seems to have the most effect on my tone as far as the way I play guitar. It kind of has like a little bit deeper sweep to the cue and it just overall, like I said, the way it interacts with the other effects that I like to use, I would go with this one if you're choosing. But as far as the difference between the three of these versus a regular one, I think first of all, you're paying for a really cool design, but What's more, I think you're paying for something that great guitar players helped design with an already great team. And the difference for me when it comes to signature pedals versus signature guitars, I am more hesitant to get a signature guitar just because I want my guitar to be mine. I want to make my own name on a guitar. But with pedals, it's like I can get that exact tone, but I can use it in my own way. I think that is a kind of a differentiator for me. So any one of these, like I said, are awesome. Joe Nagar asks, you have a huge impact on myself as a guitarist. What is the more important thing? The music notes, like music sheets, so sheet music or scales. I would say scales are technically more important because there's a lot of great guitar players that don't know how to sight read, but I don't think there's one great guitar player who doesn't know at least a scale. Whimsic asks, Dear Tyler, how do you create pinch harmonics? I played for a while now, but I've never been able to figure it out. I'll show you a quick clip from my Modern Rock Guitar Techniques course. Normally when you hit the strings, this is what your string is seeing. It's just seeing this top part of the pick, nothing else. So what you wanna do Instead of just using your pick to pick the string, you're gonna to wanna to move your thumb a little bit more towards the string so it actually grazes that string as you attack it. So the pick will hit your string first and your thumb will immediately follow to actually activate that harmonic. Rick 
Leland asks, how many truffles should I consume in one sitting? Mmm, probably none. Baha Nasef asks, hey Tyler, is it true that a guitar player should change his strings every three years? My friend told me that. Your friend is a silly fool. I change my strings probably every three weeks or four weeks, depending how much I play that guitar. Steve Smith asks, why can I play Glasgow Kiss note for note some days and then can't even play Smoke on the Water on others? That's a pretty big disparity, but I get what you're saying. Uh, the reason is because we as guitar players go through peaks and valleys. Some days it's like, I can play anything I want. And other days it's like, I can't play anything. This is just part of improving and it is definitely not only you. The biggest thing you can do is just practice more and then those peaks will become more frequent and the valleys will become less deep. Gabrielle Jernigan asks, what are your thoughts on tritones? Well, all right, that's gonna do it for yet another Q&A. I will be back next month to answer more of your questions. I really appreciate it. If you watched this far, hit the like button if you care to do so, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep shredding.